You are listening to The Real Faith Stories Podcast. Interviews with people who chose to boldly follow their faith. I'm your host, Brian Robinson. Now, let's meet our guest and hear their story. Gail, welcome to Real Faith Stories. Great to have you on the show today. Thank you, Brian. I'm honored to be here. I am really looking forward to digging into the entrepreneurial challenges that you faced when it came to grinding, Mm -hmm. and then the incredible shift that God awakened you to, to be able to walk in a way that you didn't have to grind any longer. And I realize that's still a process, right? Always, yes. Always. (laughs) So before we go there, I would love for you to share your backstory with respect to where you grew up and how you got pointed in the direction of entrepreneurship. Yeah, thank you. It's so interesting to reflect back and see how God was planting seeds all the way along in your life. I grew up in a home. My parents are still, they're 90 and 85 today. I've been married for 64 years, so so much blessing in that alone. But I grew up in a home where we did not go to church, but we believed in God. And I always believed in God as a kid. I always knew he was there. I I prayed to him. I longed. I went to church with friends and uh, I would drag my parents at Christmas and Easter to go. My mom had a genuine gift of hospitality. Um, She, and still does, she's just a giver and lover by nature, Mm. Um, loves to be in people's presence, never has known a stranger. And, uh, And then my father always had the gift of humility, generosity, and entrepreneurship. He wanted to empower others and really knew that was his call in his life. And so I, he actually was in direct sales. And that's a whole amazing, fun story, his life journey to get there. But he, I watched him empowering women, women who are at-home moms, who wanted to stay at-home moms and keep their priorities of God, family, work in line but yet to be a blessing that they knew they had gifts that they could use alongside of raising their family. And I watched this. I watched him champion women and empower women. And so those seeds were planted really early. What was it that he did that allowed him to focus on that? The company that he was with, it was focused on educating children. And so women were drawn to that. They wanted to help educate children. They were servant minded. So he loved being able to empower them to see that you can step out in service, be that servant leader outside of your home and help others to see that they can help bless their children through this educational system. And so help them to see that as a servant leader, when you step out to bless others, that, then it comes back to you, how the Lord blesses you in that. Having grown up in that atmosphere of entrepreneurship, how did that point you in the direction that you're in now? I grew up in a direct sales family, went into corporate, had some time in corporate America, but I dreamed of wanting that life that my parents had. I wanted to be that at-home mom raising children. And so married my husband. We've been married 29 years this year and we have three sons. And so here they were, three little babies. And my sister called me trying to invite me into a company. And I had been dabbling over those years of being in corporate. And I think I was always looking for that exit strategy out of corporate um, to have that entrepreneurial journey. But then when the boys were really little, I just said, okay, I'm going to dabble with this. Just do a little bit. And it just grew and grew and grew and became a great blessing. And I just, I I loved, I had a, a team and I loved coaching the women. I loved, you know, really it was just following what my dad had shown me, inspiring women to see, you know, what could be possible before they even realized it. So I spent years in that mode and there was a lot of grinding, Brian. You know, and I've since learned if you really look at the word grinding, well, let's just take teeth, for example. (laughs) If you think about grinding teeth, there is nothing good about that. Nothing. Right? Nothing good about that. I mean, it, writing means to wear down. And what we know as believers that words are so powerful. And so when we say little things like, oh, I'm just hustling, I just have a little side hustle, or just I'm just grinding or whatever, it's like, no, no, we're not. God does not want us grinding. He doesn't want us wearing down. He doesn't want us hustling. And so words are powerful. They speak life over us. And I went through about 10 years of grinding. And really what I discovered was what I was doing. I was trying. I didn't know it. I was a wife, a mother, an entrepreneur, a believer, 
living in darkness. And I know some people might say, what do you mean, Gail? How can you be a believer living in darkness? Isn't darkness reserved for those who don't believe? Well, I think that's a big trick of the enemy. He wants us to believe that darkness is just for non-believers. But I personally experienced a lot of darkness living with constant anxiety and worry, discouragement, irritability, criticalness, critical nature, judgmentalness of myself and others, trying to always prove that it should look like this. Things need to be like this, and then everything will be okay. And if I could just earn that next level, if I could just get this promotion, or if I could just earn that trip, then I will have proved that I'm worthy somehow. Mm. And I really became addicted to being busy. And I wore it like a badge of honor. And I had no idea how much darkness was in that. And how I'm defining darkness is I clearly wasn't living in God's promises. I clearly wasn't living as a daughter of the king. I clearly wasn't believing that I could live in peace and joy and that I could work from a place of rest and trust because he was guiding me. He was leading me. Let me circle back on that whole period of grinding. While you were Mm -hmm. in that space, Gail, did you ever, during that time, come up against the thought over and over of, there has to be a better way. Something's not right here. I have a huge disconnect going on in my life. It makes me emotional to answer that, Brian, because yes, all the time. Mm. But what's making me so sad about that is, and for the women that God has now called me to serve because of this. But what makes me so sad about it is, guess what my answer was? What? Work harder. You clearly haven't figured it out yet, Gail. Yes, there's got to be another way. So just try harder. Try harder to find it. And I was a believer during this time. I was praying. I was asking God to be a part of my life. But in hindsight now, it was more like I was treating him like a consultant. Like, okay, God, I need some help here. I've been trying and trying. I I really need some help here. And then, okay, thank you for that help. And then I'm sure you're busy. So you go on and do what you got to do. And I'll keep working here. I had no concept that he wanted to work with me daily, hourly, by the minute. I, I just, I couldn't comprehend at that time that that was really what he wanted. I want to seize on that thought just for a second, that Mm -hmm. you approached God as a consultant. Wow. I mean, that so resonates with a lot of my early life. Coming from an athletic background, you know, Mm -hmm. you just put your head down, you try harder. You're just not working hard enough. You're not getting the time you want because you're not fast enough, so you've got to work harder. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and right. maybe that's a carryover from sports, but I think it's a Western mentality as well, don't you? I do, absolutely. So, in the midst of this, what you thought was, I'm going to use, I put this in air quotes, God as a consultant, and I'm going to keep putting my head down. I'm going to keep busting it and grinding and doing it harder. When did things start to shift for you? What happened? So, I got on an anxiety medication, right? Because, hello. I had to have some relief somewhere. Right. And so I, I talked to my doctor about it. So I got on an anxiety medication. And that what what I didn't know, I was on it for 10 years, Brian. And wow. what I didn't know was how numbing to my life it was, to my emotions, my relationships, my processing, my ability to hear the Lord. Everything I used to go to church prior to that time of medication, and literally almost always I would have tears brought to my eyes of emotion being in a church service. Okay, well, that was gone, and I decided that that was just the price to pay for needing to have this medicine. Mm-hmm. So, fast forward, I started having God start trying to get my attention, and He literally told me, Brian, Gail, the pace of your life was so loud you couldn't hear my voice because I was just trying to fill it, fill it, fill it. Yeah. What did you do with that when he spoke that to you? Well, I started having physical problems and a number of them, and I won't go into that in detail, but the truth is God was trying to get my attention and I wasn't listening. I wasn't hearing. I didn't believe I could actually hear his voice every day, that he wanted to speak intimately into my life every day about my business, about my marriage, about my children, about my identity. And so physically things started happening. And through that process, I really fell to my knees in in just really kind of desperation. I mean, there was surgery was on the table, nerve pain, autoimmune diagnosis. There were just some major health things going on. And to tell you right now, I am free of all of that. 
praise Jesus, but he was trying to get my attention. And I literally heard him say, the life that you're living is creating self-induced anxiety. And up until that point, I thought it was my circumstances creating my anxiety. I blamed it all, all on my, all on my circumstances. If this would change, if that would change, if this person would change, if, if only, if only, if only, then I wouldn't have to be anxious. That was a position of victim, wasn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And had no idea, had no idea. And so he tells me, you're creating this. And I was like, whoa. And he said, and I have this amazing life plan for you. And in this quiet voice, he says, and you're missing it. Mm. And so I became really hungry that I was like, okay, now, Lord, what do I do? I'll do anything. How do I step out of this? And so through the process of leading me to some holistic things, the nerve pain went away, the colitis cleared up, and the anxiety lessened, and I was off the medication. Literally, I was awakened. The Lord awakened me to a completely new life. And I started to see that as a believer, I was living in what I call like this Christian, and I put that in air quotes, but this Christian life of trying to prove that I was doing everything right. Am I being a good mother? Am I being a good wife? Am I being a good entrepreneur? Am I going to church? Am I going to Bible study? Am I tithing? Am I volunteering? Am I right? All of the focus was on me. And he awakened me to this kingdom life where all the focus is on him. Lord, what do you want me to do? What do you want my marriage to look like? How do you want me to parent these adult boys? young men? How do you want my business to look? How do you want my day to look? What do you want me to do? Everything became about him. And that's just when the freedom came, the peace came, understanding I can walk, truly walk in the kingdom life here on earth. Jesus didn't come to give us an evacuation plan for salvation. He came to bring his kingdom. Yes, salvation, absolutely salvation. But he came to bring his kingdom here now. And he wants, he gave us his Holy Spirit so that we would have the power, his power through us to impact others, to love others, to serve others, to be the light of the body so that others could be drawn to him. When you got that understanding, what were the steps that the Lord led you into to make this shift out of the grind, getting off the medicine, all of that? What was Mm -hmm. that process? So he led me to a book, Hal Elrod, who I will forever be grateful for, his book called The Miracle Morning, and it had six steps. And I became very faithful. God kind of tricked me, though, because the reason why I was drawn to it, I'm just going to be very transparent and honest. I was drawn to it because I wanted the structure. And I did believe that waking up every morning and following the structure was going to help me. But the book was based on Hal had interviewed a bunch of entrepreneurs who were millionaires. And he found out, what are you guys and gals doing every morning that is making your life different than the rest of ours? So he came up with these six steps. So I knew God was drawing me to it. He brought me different Christian women who drew me to the book kept reminding me of the book. So it was really clear. Okay, God, okay, I hear you. You really want me to read this book? So I did. And for six months, I practiced every morning. And believe me, there were some mornings I did not want to get up and practice. I did not. I wanted to turn on my phone. I wanted to check my email. I wanted to look in my calendar for what were the things I needed to do today. And he was like, nope, me first. So I followed it for six months. And then it became very clear. He was telling me now, Gail, oh, And the times that I would want to quit and say, Lord, okay, I've been doing this for a while and I'm just not seeing a whole ton of fruit here. So can I quit now? Mm -hmm. And I literally would hear the Holy Spirit, nope, there's more coming. Do not (laughs) give up. So um, I just want to seize on that, Gail. There's more coming. Mm -hmm. Don't give up. I sense that someone listening to this has been hearing that from the Lord. Through what you're sharing, Gail, I want to encourage you to stay the course. God doesn't play games with us. No. And if he's led you into something, stay the course unless yes. he's leading you out of it. Amen. More is coming. Don't give up. Through this six months, though, I was starting to hear his voice in a way in my life, awakening to his voice in a way that I had never experienced before, years as a believer. What was that like? Oh, joy. It was complete joy. And can I tell you where the joy came from? Sure. It's the discipline of sitting at his feet every morning. Being still being still and faithful to being still every morning because it was not my nature. Believe me. 
So what he did then is he said, now, Gail, I want you to make every step about me, about me. So those six steps changed and became the six steps to growing in your your intimacy with Jesus. And I call it master your morning and change everything because everything did change. So as a result of this shift after six months and God rearranging the steps based on how he was leading you, you are in the process of writing a book about that, correct? Yes. As a matter of fact, I just got the first draft back from my editor. And this is one of those things. If you would have told me some years ago that I was going to be doing half of the things that I'm doing right now, the assignments that the Lord has given me through this process of sitting with him every morning, listening, letting him guide and direct my life and asking him daily to show me the best version of me as a daughter of the king, stepping into things that I would never have had the courage to do. Brian, I wouldn't, I pray in front of people. I pray all the time with people. These were things that before they were private things. And that's just one little example. But if you told me I was going to write a book, I was going to have a coaching app, I was going to start a podcast, I would be like, excuse me, you're talking about somebody else, clearly. (laughs) You walk into this new identity and you know what what God says to me? And this is not original from Gail. I I really wish I could cite the person who said this because I have no idea. But this is what God says to me. I'm not betting on you. I'm betting on my power to work through you. Come on. Yep. And when when you adopt that mindset, you step in with courage to things that you never thought you would do before. You're being bold. I was I was always Christian, always a believer, but I was never called to be overtly Christian in my branding. And clearly, I mean, my branding is kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. I thought he was calling me out of the industry after having been here for a long time. And then he was very clear. No, I want you here to coach my daughter's in this industry to walk in their identity, to build their business on kingdom values. And so it just opened up again, just this whole new assignment and mission and purpose. What's fascinating to me is this consistent narrative I hear about the desire when we want to change, when we want to make an upgrade, so to speak, in our lives, we want to look somewhere else and get out of what we're doing. We think by necessity, If we're going to change, we have to change where we are. When in fact, I believe God is always asking us, what's in your hands right now? Because that's what I'm going to work with. Oh, Brian, there is so much power and truth in what you just said. I just pray anyone listening will pause, rewind, listen to what Brian just said. Because I had a mentor some years ago. He said, what is in your hands right now? And I literally, my first thought, nothing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Now, what is in your hands right now that God wants to use? Uh, nothing. Um, and then they kept asking and kept and kept insisting that it's there. It's there because not because of who I am, but because of who God is. So once I started to believe that, okay, this isn't about what I think is there. This is about what God put there. I started to look and I found I had been practicing this master your morning for a couple of years. And I, I was like, okay, God, clearly you're wanting me to share this with women, but I, it's too vulnerable. I don't want to be this transparent about this process. And, and he was like, excuse me, who are women that you can reach out to and just ask them, say, you've been practicing something in your life for a couple of years. It's radically blessed you, radically blessed blessed your relationship with the Lord. If they're interested, you're inviting them to come learn more about it. And that was the beginning of this whole thing, just saying, okay, well, you've given me this, Lord, so I'm just going to offer this up then, if that's what you're asking me to do. You indicated that this created a whole new realm of intimacy with the Lord. Absolutely. So through that intimacy, help me understand what are the things that you've experienced in terms of him speaking to your heart and guiding you, whereas before you never heard this? So many. I I think as far as what what it was like before and then after, I mean, I could go into a number of examples. Let's just take finances, for example, or tithing. Before it felt, finances felt like a burden. They felt like tithing was like, okay, how much? And really, Lord? And I need this money. Don't I need this money? And, and then it's just this radical shift to, oh my gosh, everything I have is yours. Everything I have is from your hands. You only want me to give 10% back. Are you sure about that, Lord? Shouldn't I be giving more? I mean, that's just one of those radical shifts. 
Another would be around in my marriage. I had very specific ideas about what that was supposed to look like or what role my my husband was supposed to have or something. Or one area, he had had a big corporate career and he had a big 401k. And I was very, I had very boxed in boundaries about what we were supposed to do with that money or not do with that money. And the Lord was like, lay it down. Do you trust me for your future, Gail? Or do you you trust your 401k for your future? Which is it? Even though that was, again, part of that financial freedom that he was giving me, there was a stronghold around my marriage when it came to my husband and I's relationship with finances and my fears around finances that were just free. Another one would be working from rest. The first time I heard working from rest, I was like, did somebody misspeak? Did they say that wrong? Like, yeah. yeah. How is that even possible? How do you put work and rest in the same sentence? Like, no, we work, work, work so that we can rest on Sunday. And then I have a good friend who is a pastor and she said, Gail, actually, if you look at scripture on the seventh day, God says they rested. So Adam and Eve were created on the sixth day. So what did Adam and Eve do on their first day? I love that. They rested. I know. Isn't that so powerful? And so the idea is we've got this, again, this air quotes, Christian ease that we work, 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 work so that we can then rest. Like we now deserve rest because of all of our work. And that's that, again, that kind of grinding mentality that I have to earn my rest. And that's just not what the Lord says. He wants us to rest in him, which means I am trusting him. I am yielded to him. And from that place, I work. So I get to work from that place of rest and trust and peace. So now, instead of packing my day with task after task after task after task and running from one to the next to the next and no space in between, now I know, okay, wait a minute, Gail. Steward that rest well. Are you putting space in between? Are you making space so he can speak in between? Are you asking him what is most important? And are you laying all the rest down? Mm. It's just a whole new joy. My work now is so much more joy-filled. In Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 through 30, if you look at the message translation, that last line, keep company with me and you will learn to live freely and lightly. That old part of me wanted to say freely and rightly. Like there has to be some right way to do this. <laughs> I have to have, right? Yep. And so it's like, no, Gail, it's freely and lightly. And so just, it's just joy. It's just joy getting to work with him every day. Well, during your time seeking him, I mean, obviously you've got your agenda for the week or month, right? You've got your plans <laughs> for the day, but it sounds as if, Gail, you literally say, okay, Lord, I've got this plan, but I want what you want. And if you're going to shift it, let's do it. Amen. I want you to shift it. Yes. The, the very, very quick, I sit with him. That's step one, silence, complete silence. Step two is scripture. Step three is vision, asking for his vision for the best area of my life. And I'll ask something very specific. The fourth one is reading something where in the area that he's clearly calling me to grow. So if I'm struggling with finances, if I'm struggling with health, he'll guide me to read something. And then the fifth one is to journal about it so that I'm asking him to come into a deeper conversation with me about what I'm not seeing, where I'm struggling, what I need to let go, how I can yield more. And then that last step is the calendar Mm because that's where I want to go first. So it's last, you know, <laughs> it's, it's that agenda, it's that control. And so then I say, okay, Lord, now that I prepared my heart and my mind for this day with you, what are those most important tasks that you want me to focus on? Because truth, Brian, when I was just doing the busy, 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 a lot of it was hamster wheel. I wasn't getting anywhere, but I sure was running all the way. So true. Now it's like, Lord, I don't want that. Anymore. I want to work smarter. I want to work with strategy, your strategy, your wisdom, your blueprints, so that I'm doing what you want me to do. That way I'm going to be getting traction. Now I have peace, focus, clarity, and these are the most important things to do. And they're usually not the easy things. They make me uncomfortable. They cause me to have courage. They cause me to step into faith. All those other busy tasks are just like do the laundry, wash the dishes, make dinner. It's like, no, I don't even need to write that stuff down anymore. You used to write that down, huh? 
and I'm being a little bit symbolic about it, but I would write the things down that I was just going to do anyway, the tasks. It's like, I don't need to write the tasks down anyway. Those are going to happen. I'm a woman of my word. If I said I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. No, don't get me wrong. If I've got a doctor's appointment, I'm going to write that down so I don't miss it. But I don't need to write down all those little tasks anymore. They happen because what I'm really focused on is the project that God's called me to. One of the key things that we've talked about here over and over is he calls us to seek him first. And that's not hyperbole. That is literal. That absolutely was the whole awakening. Because when I cried out to the Holy Spirit and I said, what do I do now? He said, I told you what to do, but you're not doing it. Hello. And so in the, I told you what to do, clearly that he was directing me to his word. And so if I just go to his word and don't have to look hard or far to know, he says, seek me first. And then all these things that you're wanting or hoping for, looking for, Gail. And so I I said, okay, Lord, this is what you're asking me to do is seek you first every morning. And we we try to modify that unknowingly, right? Mm -hmm. We'll reach for something before seeking him first. We'll try Mm -hmm. to placate some anxiousness in our lives without seeking him first. We'll try to call a friend and ask for advice without seeking him first. Mm-hmm. He means seek me first. Yes. And it's it's so beautiful because there's such an when we do it again and again and again, the fruit of it is undeniable. Yeah. The fruit of it is just blessing after blessing, intimacy hearing his voice. I've been doing my podcast, Brian, for almost a year now, not quite. And I have never had one moment of anxious thought about content. (laughs) It's just there. It's just there. That's great. Um, Yeah. And what I feel like I should knock on something, forgive me, Lord, I don't really mean that. But I just mean it comes from that intimacy with him. I don't have to worry. It's there. Yeah. It's a critical thing for us to create these habits, you know, instead of reaching for something to reduce our concern or anxiety, it takes muscle memory, as it were. It takes new neural pathways developed through new habits, through consciously saying, I'm going to seek you first. Anytime there's this knee-jerk response from our habits to not do that, that's an invitation to do it. Yes. I literally would hear him saying to me in in the mornings, are you going to make me first this morning? Oh, come on. Yeah. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah. And I literally, and it was just calling me, you know, Richard Foster wrote a book, Celebrations of Discipline, and he goes through 10 different disciplines as a believer. I believe it's 10. And the fruit of discipline is joy. Yes. And it makes such perfect sense that when we, you know, really, because what we're doing when we say seek him first is we are honoring. Mm -hmm. We are honoring him. We're saying, God, you're the one who has the plans for my life. Your word says it. You declared it's true. Therefore, I'm going to honor you and sit and listen for your guidance, your counsel, your word. I'm going to honor your word and believe what it says is true. And his word does not return void. It accomplishes the purpose for which he sent it. How can people find out more about you, Gail? Oh, thank you, Brian. So I um a website called to awaken.com. Facebook group is called Kingdom Dream Chasers. The podcast is also called Kingdom Dream Chasers. Those are probably the easiest, quickest ways to get in touch with me. I'm a kingdom business coach for women of faith who are called to lead inside direct sales and network marketing and want to do so based on kingdom values. Great. As we finish here, I'd love to have you pray for our listeners, please. Thank you, Brian. Lord, thank you so much for this time with Brian. Thank you for for his ministry. Thank you for this podcast. Thank you for our listener right now, Lord. It is no coincidence that they are listening to this episode. You drew them here. There was something here in this episode that you wanted them to hear. Lord, I just pray that they would grab a hold of it and just lay it at your feet and say, show me, Lord, show me more about what you want for me here. I pray that they would seek to honor you and seek you first every day and that they would see that intimacy with you grow, their ability to hear your voice will grow, and that blessing then, not just their life, but it will start pouring out to all those around them. 
in your precious name, we thank you. Amen. Thank you, Gail. Loved your story. Thank you, Brian. It was an honor to be with you. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening. Please make sure you subscribe to the show and share this with someone you believe would be encouraged and motivated by these stories. Until next time, I'm Brian Robinson reminding you that the greatest decision you could ever make is to ask Jesus Christ to become the Lord of your life. If you haven't done that, read Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 11. Thanks again for listening.